<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Riley. Um, <clears throat> I, can, I, can, I know what you're up to. I know what you're up to with this whole thing. You've got a very clear agenda here, here at Vada. I'm on the complete opposite spectrum of the other two, uh, the other two um, uh, people who've heard talk. People, the first thing people ask me when they find out that I was donor conceived, which is something that you don't have to know very much about me to find out. I'm very open about the fact that that's part of my life. Um, is that when, when did you find out? And I'm unable to answer that question, honestly, because I don't know. As soon as I was old enough to start asking questions about my conception, I would imagine around the age of two or three, my parents told me that um, in a general, in generally in most settings, this is how babies are made, but in our, in our uh, environ, we needed, uh, we needed assistance from someone. We needed a, a man to come and do a kind thing to help you get here. And it's such an alien concept to a three-year-old. I remember being, being having, uh, my brother asked the same question, he's two, three years younger than me, and I, I was six when he was being told the same thing. I was, I was, this is beyond the realm of understanding. He's like, sure, sure. If this is how it works, that's fine. I'll go with it. <laughs> I, I, but I mean, as, as a child, it's just, it's the sort of thing that it, it just, the significance of it didn't really hit me particularly hard. And even now standing here as a 23-year-old, like, it's never really mattered. Honestly, the fact that I've been, I don't, and I, 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 am, I, am, I understand that I am one of a very privileged few of pe people who are sort of my age and beyond. Um, the way that these uh, attitudes and principles are, were at work when you guys were like sort of being stewed up is, was very different and, and attitudes have changed now, definitely for the better. But um, I guess I, I understand that I'm very lucky, I'm very privileged to be in the position that I'm in, I'm in now and to be, able, to be able to stand here and say to you very honestly that it has never, ever, ever been an issue for me, the fact that I've been donor conceived. I've never been ashamed of it. I, it's never, I, I, I mean, I have never questioned my parents' legitimate. I've never looked at my dad and said, he is not my father. I mean, I've said it for a range of other reasons. <laughs> I've questioned his legitimacy as my, as my father for every other reason on earth. But the fact that there's, like, the fact that there's no biological link to him, to, between he and I is irrelevant. And it's very interesting hearing, hearing, sto hearing stories from uh, Louise and saying, her, her saying things that, uh, you know, your sister came from a different donor. I have a brother and a sister and they're both, they're both from different donors. There are three different donors in my, in, uh, in my family. And it's completely irrelevant. It's never, been a, it's never been a cause for disconnect or concern or anything else like that. Um, and you, you, uh, you had to use, this is the other big issue. Ross had to use the word social father. The biggest difficulty, the, the most enormous difficulty that I have with this whole realm is the nomenclature. Sitting here tonight is my biological father and one of my biological sisters. And I don't like using those words because they, there is an enormous level of implication there. I have a man who was, uh, in, in, the, in the room tonight was a man who was kind enough to spunk into a jar many years ago and help me get here. And Tim, I mean, I'm enormously appreciative of, that, of, the, of the kindness that that man showed many years ago. And I'm enormously appreciative of the relationship that we've developed since meeting him uh, nearly five years ago now. But having said that, like, he's not my dad. I have one dad. He yelled at me when I was in trouble. He paid my school fees. He put dinner in front of me on the table. Like that, that, that's fatherhood, as far as I'm concerned. We hated each other at many points in our, in our, in our, in our lives. We had all the, the, the butting of heads that happens between a teenage male and his father. But that's, that's so much more important than, than something as, as arbitrary as being related to, to someone. Having said that, I'm enormously appreciative of the relationships I have with the people that, to, which, uh, to whom I'm biologically related to in this, in this thing. And, I, and I'll tell you what, for parents who are concerned that, I there is, uh, that um, uh, their offspring pursuing relationships with the people to whom they're biologically related later in life in any way undermines or delegitimizes their role as a parent, you, you'll, you, you, are, you are dreaming. You are having a laugh. When I saw, when I saw my, my biological father, I was not looking for a replacement. I was not looking for a second father. I was not looking for anything other than an interest. More than anything else, I wanted to see if we, you know, if we had the same colour of eyes, which we do. You know, I wanted to see what we had in common, what we didn't have in common. The things that I got from my dad, the things that I got from my donor. It's, it, it's just, it's, a very, it's been a very interesting, been a very rewarding journey. And I, like, I can't stand up here and say that this has ever been a cause for consternation in my life. Unfortunately, my sister was bullied relentlessly at school, which is absolutely foul. And there is uh, like people talking to her about growing up with someone who isn't her real father. And these attitudes are, these are primordial, like cavemen attitudes to have. And obviously we're, we're well on the way to getting rid of them. But there's nothing, it's very easy for me to say this, and I don't mean any disrespect for the people who have, who have toiled through all sorts of conflict and strife in their lives. There is nothing bad about this process. There is nothing to be feared as a result of this way of, of having a life come into being. And especially now, especially now with these attitudes 
in this, uh, you know, in this uh, decade or however you want to put it. You know, this, I mean, I, I, I came from parents who I think showed enormous foresight and wisdom in, in, in deciding to tell all three of us from the very beginning. And it's incredible to see the difference in attitude that I have with my brother and my sister. My brother has absolutely no interest in meeting his donor and, and never, never want, I've spoken to him and said, you know, time's running out. And he's just like, he doesn't want it. My sister's still undecided. It's not a big thing. It's not a big deal. And it isn't going to be a big deal unless you make it. And the easiest way to make sure it's stuff up for you is to not tell people and to not be honest about it and to not, if you treat it as though it's something to be ashamed of, that will, that is how it will be viewed by the people you are raising. And my parents showed, as I said, enormous wisdom and I still cannot get them to come and, and impart this wisdom to you. I am acting here by proxy to tell you that openness and honesty is the key to this sort of thing working out. And I, I, I don't mean to disparage or, or take anything away from the people who have, have, who have bled and, sweat and, cry, and, and sweated and cried over these, over these issues because they can be terrible. But I was very fortunate to come from a family in which these things were, were, were treated with an enormous level of openness and honesty. And a result, as a result, I'm able to stand here in front of you today and say that this is a journey that, above all else, is just an interesting little twist in, in, in the journey of life that we are all a part of. So, <coughs> big sign off, here we go. I'm trying to think, I've got, to, I've got to condense it all into one thing. Do it, don't be worried about it. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you very much for listening to me. <laughs>